First off, uh, I'd like to uh, start out by saying that uh, much of what people see and hear on social media is not true. I want to start by reassuring everyone about uh, the current vaccines that have received emergency use authorization. The emergency use authorization does not mean it's something that hasn't been subjected to adequate clinical trials. It may only be received after large-scale clinical trials are performed and it's proven to be both efficacious and safe in large-scale trials, what are called phase three clinical trials. When uh, the drug companies submit their data to the FDA to achieve that status, they present the entire picture of their entire trial. It is reviewed by a blue ribbon committee uh, from all around the country of experts, both in public health and in infectious diseases. In both cases, those committees reviewed the data and made the recommendation that they receive emergency use authorization. Um, that recommendation was then approved by the director of the FDA and also approved by the director of the CDC. A total of close to 75,000 people participated in the trials of these two drugs. Half of those people received the vaccine, half did not. Of the ones who received the vaccine and the ones who did not, there were very mild to moderate uh, side effects, but there was no uh, serious life-threatening uh, side effect during the trial. Now, some of you have heard uh, that there are some patients who do get what's called anaphylaxis which is a serious reaction to any uh, injectable drug or anything taken by mouth. The only thing I can tell you is that that is exceedingly, exceedingly rare. What do these vaccines consist of? They consist of something called messenger RNA which has been created synthetically, uh, and it's surrounded by a lipid nano envelope, a nanoparticle. And those particles enable the uh, RNA to uh, escape the normal enzymatic destruction that would occur to any RNA which is in our system, uh, and to get into our own cells. Now, messenger RNA is a specific type of RNA. It cannot reproduce, it cannot produce an infection, uh, it cannot, it is not a virus itself. It is simply a strand of the type of RNA that goes to the protein producing uh, organelles within our cells called the mitochondria and instructs the mitochondria to produce a particular protein. And that messenger RNA is subsequently destroyed within our own cells. And that destruction occurs to any messenger RNA that we produce in our cells uh, and is not long lasting. You're not getting something that lasts forever. You're not getting something that's capable of reproducing itself. And you're not getting something that incorporates into your genetic structure in any way, shape, or form. It's an extraordinarily clever and highly uh, well-developed vaccine. Uh, what it does is it takes your own cells, enables them to produce spike protein temporarily. That spike protein is recognized by your immune system and you produce both a uh, cellular and antibody immune response. It doesn't create an autoimmune response. It doesn't create a disease. 
it creates an immune response. Now, you can have symptoms from that immune response. People can get aches and pains, low-grade fevers. The site of an injection can be sore, but it doesn't uh, last. Uh, those symptoms are transient, usually uh, handled well with uh, mild analgesics, such as Tylenol, and uh, people uh, do not develop any long-lasting uh, sequelae. Uh, from these vaccines in general, except that they have highly uh, well-developed immune responses to the virus. The one thing that has been shown in both trials, both the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines, are close to 95% efficacious in preventing uh, coronavirus infection uh, following the second dose of the vaccine so that two weeks after the second dose of vaccine if you look at all the people who got infected with coronavirus 95 percent of them were in the control group and five percent of them were in the vaccinated group the people who were vaccinated had much milder infections and the only death that occurred during the trials occurred in the control group, not in the vaccinated group. Look, think of it as who wants to be the last person to die from COVID-19? I know I don't. The only way to keep yourself from being that last person to get that infection is to become uh, immune to that infection. And the way we get immunity is by uh, either taking the vaccine or suffering through an infection. And there's some evidence that the vaccine produces a stronger, more lasting immune response than the infection itself, uh, particularly mild and asymptomatic infections that do occur under, uh, under many circumstances. As far as we know, there have been no mutations that can uh, escape these antibodies. The second thing is if a mutation was so great in the spike protein that the antibodies no longer attacked it, that mutation may make that virus into a different virus. It may attack different cells. It may not be as virulent. And, uh, you know, most coronaviruses all they do is cause you to have a common cold. It took a lot of mutations to, to create a spike protein that uh, enabled this virus to enter all the types of cells it does and enables it to cause the severe disease that it does. If it mutated away from that, it may not be as virulent. So there are many reasons to think that um, having a, a robust immune response to spike protein will protect you from getting uh, a serious case of this disease or any case of this disease. There are a few things that are not known after immunization that we need to make sure everyone's aware of. One is that we don't know if you can get a mild transient asymptomatic case after you're immunized and not even know it. The other is if you do get a one of these mild asymptomatic cases, can you pass it on to other people? We don't know the answer to those questions. So the advice that we give everyone is to wear a mask and to socially distant even after immunization until the prevalence of this disease in the population at large is so small that we can return to our normal everyday activities and there's only a sporadic case uh, that occurs uh, periodically surrounded by uh, the herd immunity that keeps it from spreading. Once that occurs, life returns to normal. We can go back to the movie theaters and restaurants and we can live our lives with our families celebrating holidays together.
Everyone's heard about herd immunity. And what does that mean? So for every one person who gets that infection, more than one other person is infected. And that's why it spreads so, so wildly. And that's why if one person gets infected, then three people are infected, then six people are infected, then 12 people are infected, et cetera, et cetera. And those numbers build up very, very rapidly. I personally, as a healthcare worker, took my uh, uh, coronavirus vaccine um, without any hesitation whatsoever. Um, and I would recommend it to any member of my family, uh, my uh, sister, my wife, my son. My son is developmentally disabled. He was in the 1A group. He got his vaccination uh, and had no uh, issues with it. And I'm really pleased that he did. Um, this is a safe vaccine. It's an effective vaccine. Uh, and it's something that we all need to get on board with to get back to normal life. It's a very, very uh, clever and highly effective vaccine and highly safe vaccine. There have been no deaths to date associated with getting this vaccine. There are a lot of deaths occurring every day from the disease. Um, I've uh, made rounds in the intensive care unit day after day. Young people uh, have unfortunately uh, been victimized and succumbed to this. Do not, you know, think that you are immune, even if you're young. No one uh, can really say that they're safe until they are immune. Although there isn't any data in that pregnant people were not included in the trials, um, there is a lot of information about uh, the increased risk of uh, pregnancy in people who have uh, the disease. And what we are sure about is if you're pregnant and had COVID, have COVID-19, your chance of having serious complications is dramatically increased by having that infection. Um, the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, they feel that uh, it's far safer to have the vaccine and get immunized uh, and be immune than to take your chances getting the disease. There's no reason to believe that there's any harm with getting the vaccine. If you're lactating and you develop an immune response, you're gonna confer some passive immunity to your uh, child. And that's not a bad thing for a, uh, an infant to have passive immunity. That's why we encourage uh, breastfeeding so much because moms can prevent their children from getting uh, uh, infections of a whole variety. ACOG, the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, has taken a position that uh, they believe that uh, vaccination is the right thing for, uh, for women. If you have any questions about it, please consult with your obstetrician or gynecologist. Um, but it's my belief that I'd rather uh, have the vaccine than have the disease. And we know for absolute certain, based upon uh, data which is published in peer-reviewed journals, that having the disease while you're pregnant uh, increases the risk of uh, maternal complications. Traveling and being able to meet and be with your families is something that we've all missed. Don't you think I'd like to have had a, law, a large gathering for Thanksgiving and Christmas? I know I would have uh, and did not. Uh, the only way we can get there is with your help. So please, everyone, if you see this, if you have a question that hasn't been answered, come and talk to me. 
And thank you uh, for allowing me to bend your ear on this and also for giving us some attention.